Today I would like to show you one of the most important process when doing taxidermy, and that is how to properly prepare a cape before you salt it. And this is when you have to split the lips and uh, turn the ears and flesh the cape before the salting process. When taking the cape from a, uh, an animal or a deer that you're gonna have a shoulder mount, you wanna start by making a circle around the back of the shoulder, around here. Do it with a magic marker here. So you wanna cut them behind the leg and you wanna go all the way around. Okay, all the way around. This is just the line where we attach the form. So this is a little bit too far back. So as long as it's behind the shoulder, about that much, you're good. And then you're gonna make another cut around the legs right above this joint here, okay? And then you're gonna make another cut behind the leg, behind the leg like this, and then across like that. And this is a lot of times where the brown hair meets the white hair. So you wanna make that cut. And then you wanna make a, a dorsal cut between the ears that comes all the way straight, 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 all the way to the back. And when you make those cuts, you want to use your knife. When you use your knife, you never want to cut like that because you're cutting all the hair. So you're leaving hair on the meat. So what you want to do is you always want to use your knife like that. So you stick it in there like that and then you cut with a blade out. That way you don't cut any of the hair and you make a straight cut. Once you get, and then normally the animal's going to be hanging by his back legs and then you start skinning them out. When you start skinning and you start at this corner here, try to leave that little bit of, of muscle meat that's there on the skin and that helps you get a clean uh, skinning job and try to leave as little meat as you possibly can on the skin. So concentrate on cleaning the skin so as, as you're skinning it um, because it's a lot more difficult to take that flesh off the skin later. So once you get to the back of the head here that you've skinned it all up. Then you go ahead and you cut, you make your cut, and then you, you cut the head with the horns or antlers with the cape attached, with the skin attached. One thing that you wanna keep in mind that I see so many times people making the mistake, they'll bring a skin, a, a, cape, a cape all the way back to here, thinking, oh, you know, we wanna leave enough cape for the tax members, but then they come in here and when they're skinning the animal out, they don't know what to do when they get to the legs and they cut them in the inside of the leg and cut the brisket. Well, keep in mind that the best way to do it is to cut it behind the leg. Remember, always behind the leg, never in the inside of the leg. A lot of times I'll also see people skinning out a deer for mounting and what they do is they'll make that round cut and then they'll make this round cut here. They don't split it down the middle but then they start pulling all the skin back. Well, it's very difficult to pull the leg out from the holes. And realistically, when we get the skin back, we still have to make that cut. So make that cut and it'll be a lot easier for you to cape out as well as this back cut, okay? Um, it's gonna make it a lot easier than to just, you know, make it like a sock where you're just gonna pull the whole thing out because a lot of times um, when these skins go to a tannery to be tanned, they should be split down the back. That way they will open up flat when they're salting, which is a lot better. And it's a lot easier for the tannery to do the proper fleshing for the capes. So don't be afraid to split the animal down the back. Um, and, and again, remember to always cut behind the leg never underneath and cut the brisket area this is a detailed video not only for um, taxidermists but also outfitters uh, professional hunters and every big game hunter so the next step once you have re removed the uh, the uh, the head from the carcass is to cape out the deer head and what i like to use is these blades they're number 60, uh, and I get them from Havilon. And Havilon makes a really nice knife. It's a folding knife that, you, you know, it's a lot of hunters are using them nowadays. 
And I just use it on a regular uh, uh, scalpel handle and it fits in perfectly. So, um, like I showed you before, you make the cuts, remove this, this, the cape or the skin. And I was real careful to not leave any meat on the skin as I was skinning it out, which like I mentioned before, is the, is the easiest way to do it once it's on the, uh, the carcass. It's the easiest way to get it clean like that. So what we wanna do is we wanna start here. This is the cut, the dorsal cut. And now I'm gonna make like a V cut. So it'll be I wanna join it with this cut. So I'm gonna make sure I don't cut any of the hair. I'm gonna make sure I don't leave any hair or skin around the burrs or the base of the antlers. I'm gonna cut very close to it. So just to start it off, once I get it started a little bit, what I'd like to do is get a screwdriver And with the screwdriver, I get it there and I push it in and I start peeling it around the base of the horns. So once I've separated the skin from around the antlers, then I move on to the ears. It's a good idea to start uh, separating the ear cartilage while it's still on the head, because it almost serves like as a third hand when trying to turn the ears inside out later on. So I just want to skin it out to show you where I'm going to make my cut for the ear. I'm going to come here and you can see that this cartilage is part of it right here. You, you don't want to cut here, so you want to cut closer to the head. Okay. And there's the, the hole right there. So you just make that cut like that. And that's how you remove the ear from the head or the skull. We come around the other side and again we want to skin it out as far as we can and then again not cutting the cartilage right here but a little bit closer to the head. So now we have removed the ears. Okay. We're moving on to the eyes, but as you can see, I'm trying to cut close to the skin and not leaving any red meat. So notice how I'm cutting close to the skin, not leaving any meat on the skin. So now we're getting close to the eye. And what I'd like to do is put my left hand inside the eye and I will find the eye right there and put my finger in the eyelid, inside the eyelid where I could feel my finger. And then I know 
where the end is so they don't cut. And you'll find this membrane in here, this white membrane, and I can feel it with my finger, so I know I'm not gonna cut my finger because I know where it is. So once I find that membrane, I'm gonna make a cut, and then I'm gonna follow that, leaving the inner membrane attached to the skin. Then I'm gonna come down here, again, leaving as much red meat as possible on the hide. Now, when you get to the corner of the eye, it's where it gets kind of tricky because you have the tear duct, your tear duct there. So you're gonna take the tip of your knife and you're gonna dig deep inside to remove it. And you're gonna pull with your left hand. And that's it. So you've got your eye. And again, cutting close to the skin. So keeping out your deer head is, is something that every hunter should know how to do because if, especially if you're, if you're a traveling hunter and you're traveling to other states to hunt and stuff like that and you want to bring your, your deer head for your uh, local tax numbers to mount it uh, and to travel with it, put it on a, the, bring it back on the plane with you and stuff, it's so much easier just to take the cape and cut the horns and bring the horns and you could always put it in a bag or something and bring it back with you as opposed to bringing that whole head, uh, which, you know, nowadays with the laws, different laws changing all the time, uh, you know, you cannot travel with deers that still have their brain matter and stuff like that inside. So once you start getting to the lips, you'll find that it's it's the skin here, it's just difficult to, to skin. So you wanna cut back here about an inch and then grab that inner lip and start skinning it out. Some people like to, at this point, they like to turn the, the head in, uh, upside down like this and skin it from the outside, which is fine, or you could do it both ways. I'll do it on the outside so you can see. But you always wanna leave a little bit of the inner lip because that's what goes tucked into the form for the taxidermist later on, so that's important that you leave that. There's the bottom lip here. So you wanna cut close to the skull here, okay? So we'll go to the inside again. I think you'll get a better idea if we do it from the inside. So now you're getting close to the nose. And there you have it. Now you got the head and you've got the cape. So now we have the cape. So this cape is 
pretty clean, no red meat on it, ready for salting. It's already got, I've punched in the numbers for the client, is there. And um, so now the next step is to clean around the eyelids, which is a little bit of meat. And then we're gonna split and clean the nostrils and then remove the lip. Always keep it in mind that you have to leave about half or a quarter of an inch of the inner lip attached to the cape. And we're gonna turn the, in, the ears inside out. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. And uh, then once you've done that, then the skin is ready to be salted. And then once it's dried, it's ready to be processed or sent to your, your tannery uh, for the finished product. We're gonna saw off the, the, the skull plate from the skull. So what we wanna do is we wanna cut between the eye and the burr. So we're gonna make a cut there. Then we're gonna flip this head over and we're gonna take some of this meat off the back of the head. So, this, so we won't have a problem sawing it. Now, a lot of times, um, people wanna just cut the skull like this and not leave enough bone back here. What you wanna do is you wanna cut the skull here at the top of the head, the skull, you want to start cutting there and then make a cut straight down. So leave a little bit of that skull plate there. Okay. Then next what I'd like to do is I'll remove about an eighth of an inch from this bone right here to the back but it's got meat there that is very difficult to remove so i'll take the saw and i'll cut that little piece off then we'll remove the brain and there's this liner in here. I like to also take off. And this is very important if you're if you're if you're traveling with your head from one state to the to another. This definitely has to be removed, and all this red meat must be also removed from the skull plate. And it's not difficult. It only takes a few minutes to do it. And I feel that by leaving this little piece of bone here, you know, I could handle it better and remove some of this meat from the, from the skull here, or for the skull plate, I should say. So there you have it. So now if you'd like, you could put a little bit of borax on there or a little bit of salt just to uh, prevent it from, you know, bringing bugs or, or smelling. All right, for those of you that, that travel out of state and would like to bring your, your deer heads and, and trophies back to your local taxidermist, um, the best way, the best tape I, I could give you is, for example, this here is a, is a, is a large white tail so what I like to do is I like to take like a Ziploc bag and I'll take the measurements. Actually, I took the measurements from this deer before I skinned him out, but he's seven inches 
from the tip of the nose to the eye duct, or right down seven and a half inches. And then I'll take a measurement of the neck. As you can see, this is a fairly large white tail cape. Okay. And measured him at 20 inch neck. But after I skid him out, he's going to be 22 inches. So that's a large buck. 22 inches. So after I skinned him out and got him all fleshed out and everything, and I haven't turned the ears or nothing, so all that's intact for the taxidermist to do later. So I'll wrap it up with the ears and nose inside, and I could fit that skin in a one gallon Ziploc bag. Okay, so then what I'll do is, I will put this little bag with the cape in a freezer and have it frozen solid so when I travel back home with it I can bring it back with me either in my suitcase or a cooler with my meat or in a box and a lot of times what I'll do is if uh, I will you know if I have if I forgot a freezer I could put the whole rack and everything I'll just take it and put the cape inside and then make a little box for that or put it in a cooler bring it back home with a uh, large white tail is just recently been caked out and as you can see, it was cut behind the legs and you've got, you've got the front legs right here and you've got the brisket intact. So what we wanna do is, like I said, when you start fleshing the skin or start skinning it, is to leave as much meat on the carcass as you possibly can so you have a nice, clean skin. So this skin would be ready to salt um, as far as um, the way it's been cleaned. Now, on a lot of animals, especially like your big elk, red stags, axes, deer, um, buffaloes, anything with animals that are big, mature animals that have thick hides, sometimes around the neck area, around especially around this part of the back of the neck, the skin is gonna be real thick, sometimes over an inch thick. So what you need to do in that case, if your skin is real thick, you need to take a sharp knife and just dice it up like that, okay? And cut deep without cutting through the skin, of course, but making as, as many cuts as you can, like that. And that, you wanna make those cuts so the salt penetrates that thick, thick hide. Otherwise, sometimes that skin is so thick that the salt will not penetrate. And if the salt does not penetrate, you're gonna get hair slippage on the other side. So it's very important that if you have a, an animal with a very thick hide in the back of the neck, you need to make those cuts. Now, as you can see here, uh, we have the ear where it's been cut off from the, from the head. Okay, and we skinned it out. Here are the ears. And then these are the eyes. And as you can see, I try to leave as much meat as possible on the, on, on the head itself and, and having the skin where there's hardly any red meat. There's some here, and this is, we've got the nose here. We're gonna work on that nose now. And we've got the bottom lip as well. So I'm gonna show you now how to turn the ears and clean the eyes and split the lips. As you can see right here, you'll see the Y cut, that the top of the antlers, here's where the antler would be in here. Okay, so here's the Y cut. That'll later, when, in the, mount, the mounting process, it's gonna be showed up like that there. Okay, on both sides. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna work on these eyes first. What I like to do is, as you can see, it's got a membrane on the inside of the eye. That membrane, that white membrane has to stay. But all this meat has to be removed around the eyes. Like I said before, otherwise, if you don't, if you try to salt this, the salt will not penetrate through that and you will get hair slippage. And it's a shame that after so much work and money and time and everything, um, if you don't do this, that skin may be ruined. So what you wanna do is start fleshing around those eyes.
here's that tear duct right here that I was telling you about. That tear duct is right there. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking all the flesh from around the eyelid. And right here where that thin skin is, that's that membrane that you want to leave. So. So here's the eyelid right there. You gotta be careful, you don't cut the eyelid, just wanna leave a little bit of that membrane in there because that's needed for the uh, mounting process when you're doing the eyes. So basically that's your eye right there, the meat from around the eye that was removed. And same thing on this other eye here. Now we're going to move on to the ears. Okay. So you want to start off by skinning it close to the um, cartilage here. And the idea is to turn this ear inside out. Now, once you start getting into this little corner down here, which is right there, that corner of the ear is right here. So you gotta be careful you don't keep going because you can't go any further. Well, that's where the corner, that's where it ends right there. Well, now what you want to do is start turning this ear. So once you get to this point, you could practically take your thumb and start pushing and start pulling it apart. Now I also like to take a large screwdriver like this and I'll take the screwdriver but it's got to be one that doesn't have a sharp edge otherwise it'll go right through the skin. So you want to go down and up and separate that skin from the cartilage. Being very careful not to break through the skin. Now you see I'm right at the tip right there, okay? And I'll turn the screwdriver like that. And start pulling it apart. I also, sometimes what I do is I'll come back in here, put it here and I'll take the screwdriver and I'll do that. Okay, I'll take the screwdriver and I'll go inside the ear hole and I'll put it on the table and I'll take the ear and I'll start turning it like that, okay? And then I'll push a little bit and my ear is gonna be turned inside out. You wanna take it, you wanna take it to the tip. I've seen it sometimes where 
they'll turn the ears and it'll only go halfway. Well, when you salt the skin, that area, if you don't open it up like that, it's not gonna get salted. So you'll sometimes get hair slippage there and the skin will be ruined. So you wanna make sure that your ear is properly turned all the way to the tips. And once you've done that, you wanna remove the flesh from the cartilage and leaving that cartilage intact. So you wanna come in here and you wanna start cutting off all this red meat from this cartilage. So there you have the cartilage clean. A lot of times also I'll see a mistake where somebody, they'll come and they'll cut it like that and they'll remove all this. Well, we need to have all this uh, cartilage. So there you go, there's your ear turned inside out. All right, now we're gonna work on the nose and on the lips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it inside out, okay, and uh, Here's the inside of the lip. What you want to do is skin, skin it out to the edge, which is right here where the lip line is. You want to, you want to make sure that you skin all this meat all to the, to the, to the, uh, to the lip line. And you need to leave about a quarter of an inch all along the lip. It's very important that you leave all that inner lip because that's what goes tucked inside the form when you're mounting it, okay? So the way I like to do it is I'll start here. And I've got my hand underneath so I can feel with these fingers where I'm at. So I'm right there, I'm getting right there to the edge. See right there, I'm at the edge. So I'm gonna skin a little bit over the edge on this lip part, okay? And I'm gonna make this cut all the way around the bottom lip. getting to the to the front of the mouth or part of the nose so basically I've already cut all the way around the uh, the lip which is the process known as uh, splitting the lips before salting. It's very important to do this. Otherwise, you're gonna get hair slip if you don't around the mouth and nose and lips. Okay, as you can see, I have gone all the way around the whole lip, top and bottom. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I can see where I've skinned out and leaving that little part right there. I'm going to cut, make a cut right there and I'm going to cut all the way around it, removing the lower and upper lip. And I can see where that edge is, so I'm cutting right at that edge. See the edge right there? Always very important to leave that little quarter of an inch of inner lip there. There's the bottom lip right here. So now we've come to full circle. So right here, this is your lip right here. That's your lower and upper lip. Now the lips are ready to be salted. So now the last process is the nostril. I have a little bit of cartilage there. So what I like to do is I like to split that cartilage right down the middle. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll put my finger inside one of the nostrils and I'll start fleshing. Now the question is how far do you flesh going up into the nostril? Well, the key to it is that you flesh until you get to the part of the skin that has no hair on it. Because that's gotta be tucked inside the form later on during the mounting process. So if you're cutting the skin where you've got hair, then you're cutting too much. So you've gotta skin it out to where there's no hair. And again, it's the same process of going around. See right there, there's no hair there already. So I'm gonna cut there. See the hair inside there? So you're gonna cut where there's no hair. That's one of the nostrils. And you go to the other. Now, we've got the nose all fleshed out, the lips all turned. We got the eyes, and what the, we got the ears turned inside out. So now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna punct, puncture holes on this cape so we know what tag number it goes with. So this tag number is 157. So what we do is on the lower left hand corner we'll do a mark and that'll be one and then five one two three four five and seven one one two three four five six seven so now we know that when this skin goes out to the tannery and we, we get it back in the shop, we know that this skin belongs with the horns with the tag number 157. That way we don't have any, any problems of getting capes or anything like that mixed up. This cape is 100% ready for salting. And what we want to do is when we start salting, we want to do this bottom part first so we don't forget it. Do the bottom, always rubbing in the salt, okay? We rub the salt everywhere, lips, nose, eyes, ears, back, front, everywhere. And then what I'd like to do is, I like to stretch them out as much as possible. 
when I salt it this way instead of the long ways because it tends to uh, remain a, a, a wider cape when it comes back from the tannery. So what we'll do is after it's salted, we'll turn it in like that. And I'll, I like to roll up the skin with the salt inside, put salt here, bring it in, salt here, bring it in, and then roll it up like that. Put it like that and i like to put it in a spot where it's elevated coming down like that and leave it there for about four or five days and it all drains after it drains we'll open up the skin again and hang it for a few more days until it dries up and then it's ready to be folded boxed and shipped to the tannery so if you're a big game hunter it is very important that you learn this method and how to do this properly because the time will come when you won't have a freezer or any other way to preserve your trophy except by salting it to preserve it.